Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. And today I thought I'd go a bit more in depth about my watercolor pencils palette painting technique. So I start by taping down my paper with masking tape because I will be using a good amount of water for this and I need the page to stay flat. I take a scrap piece of watercolor paper, you can use thick cardstock or acrylic paper or any thick paper actually, maybe even printer paper, but I have not yet tried that one out, so I'm not sure if it's just going to rip or buckle too much. But yeah, any thick paper should do. And I apply dark blue, green and orange, the exact tones were helium blue, reddish earthy green and cadmium orange and I apply a good amount of fur to this. The key for this technique is to keep your improvised palette, aka the scrap piece of paper, constantly wet. And I try out to see what colors I get by mixing them on just a piece of toilet paper, that way I know what it looks like before I actually apply it on the paper. Now, the key with this technique, if you're going for a soft diffused effect, is the more water you use, the less color you get. Memorize that because we will be using it all throughout this video. And the opposite is also true. The more color you want, the less water you will need. So I make a very nice puddle on my scrap piece of paper, I dilute it a lot and I paint the sky, which a lot of water, little color, diffused effect and the more things are in the background, in the distance in our painting, the less color they will need. Then I very loosely draw some uh, random shapes, you can make a mountain, you can make very diffuse trees, whatever you want. We're just doing this for the sake of practice. And another very important moment is you need to wait. Patience is key for the layers to dry in between themselves. And when I say you need to wait a lot for this to dry, I just go up and made myself a sandwich. So by now it has dried and I add a bit more water just to make sure everything is nice and activated and that improvised palette has not dried on me because watercolor pencils dry very fast and you may want to just add a couple of droplets before you leave a layer to dry. Otherwise, if the tiny palette dries upon you, then you're going to take an earth scrap piece of paper and reapply off the colors and start again. So for each of these layers, I'm just making sure it's nicely activated and I add a smidge more of my dark blue and my orange. I'm adding more and more of them with each layer. For the third layer, I want to do a tiny house on the right side because why not? And I'm surrounding it with tiny trees. And the closer we get to us, the closer we get to the bottom of the page, things start to get more and more defined. So I just do very basic shapes for the house, a square and then a tiny tree on the side, just make a little V shape and blobs on top of it for a tree crown and then diffuse that one as well and leave it to dry. Then I mix a slightly darker color, again with more blue and more orange and I do a lower layer which gets again a bit more definition. And I just proceed like that. The main benefits of the palette technique are if you have a tiny set, because these can be expensive, especially in today's economy, you can mix literally any color your heart desires. You don't need to go and buy a 72 set, 144 set. You can just use even a basic 12 set, which is why I, what I used for a very long time when I started my watercolor pencils tutorials. And this right here is a 24 set. As long as you have the basics, a couple of yellows, a couple of reds, and a couple of blues and a black, you'll be perfect. And another use for these is before when I used to go to work and I'd paint on my lunch breaks or when I'd go traveling and I didn't have the space for an entire pencil set, I'd just scratch some of the base colors on a watercolor sheet, put that in my sketchbook and just use that as a palette, just like you would with a normal watercolor palette. 
I actually have a full tutorial I did several years ago on doing a DIY kit uh, with this technique. That's literally perfect for traveling. Like back in the day, you couldn't take pencils on an airplane. Well, not all lines allowed them because they could be dangerous for some reason. So this is literally a great hack, quote unquote. And this tutorial right here is a great practice for how much water you're using for uh, how to mix your colors from how contrast and saturation works. I just like doing these little um, misty backgrounds for that reason. And again, it teaches you patience, which is a very good thing to have. So as I get lower and lower, I paint more and more defined tree shapes. I do a straight line and then I tap on either side to get the foliage. I'm going for a forest look here. So that's why I'm using trees. You can do mountains. You can do literally anything you want. Any subject you want is fine. And you can even use different colors. Like don't do the same gray background I'm doing. You can do an um, earthy skin. You can do it in pinks, you can do it in greens, you can do it in oranges and yellows, whatever color scheme you want. So whenever I paint a row of trees, I just dilute it downwards with a wet brush to make it, uh, to give it that misty effect and make it diffuse into the white of the paper. And as I get lower and lower with my layers, the big uh, piece of, the big scrap piece of paper dried on me because I was using less and less water, thus it dried up. So I took another one and applied the same exact colors on it. And again, I used less water because I'm painting subjects that are closer to me. Thus, I want them to be more saturated, more dark, more vibrant. And if you're curious where I get all these scrap pieces of paper, I'm a bit of a cheapskate, so I usually order the huge 70 by 50 watercolor sheets that is in centimeters, and I cut them down to paper sizes that you see me using on my channel or I use uh, for tiny paintings like my Polaroid series, I get some weird bits left out. And if I buy watercolor paper from like the dollar store or some unknown brand and it ends up being bad quality, I use it up using this technique. Better than just wasting it. Don't you agree? So for the final layer, I want a huge tree. I want to bring the viewer's attention to a tiny house we painted in the middle on the right side. So to do that, I'm going to paint a huge tree on the left side, just crossing the entire page from the bottom to the top. I'm making a V-shaped tree trunk and some random branches and then I just tap with my mix and my brush to add random foliage on top of those branches. That way it sort of frames this whole misty forest vibe we have going on and I think it really brings the attention to that house which is what I want. Then I take black and I wet it with my work color brush and I just apply it uh, beneath all of the foliage for shadows to give it more detail because this is the very final layer we have going on. I'm just rubbing a wet brush against uh, the, well not graphite, but against the pigment of the pencil and then I tap the brush on top of the paper and it gives me what's pretty much raw pigment. I also do the bottom and the right side of the branches with this black pigment, layering it on top of the previous mix we got from that palette watercolor pencils technique. And I'm going to add a hint of black to that palette mix, mix it all up, and then with my brush I'm using these uh, flick motions to get some grass blades to surround that tree for our final layer. I'm just randomly going with my brush left and right, up and down. Some grass blades are shorter, some are taller, some go up to the previous layers. That is perfectly fine. I want this to be as random as possible. 
And then for some added definition, I take my black pen, so you do not need to wait for it to dry from it being wet. That just gives it even a more interesting effect, in my opinion. And I just keep on adding some more grass blades on top of the previous ones to get a bit of depth going on with them. And that is it. I like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of July. And thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video useful, even though it is a bit more different than our typical landscape paintings. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And we'll see each other in the next one. Bye bye.